I have felt all my life that I have this exact story in my body and now I get to talk about it with the people who knew her. And it's, it's one of the greatest gifts of my life. Everybody deals with the death of a parent differently. I think this was a really, really therapeutic thing for Michelle to do and to bring it back here as a full circle opportunity, like that Barhead offered her this opportunity. She was so thrilled and it kind of just was all meant to be. And we feel the same way. We're very, very proud of her. We think it's a fantastic show. She brings her mother back to life through art. I did not see how I was going to be able to write this play. It was too much. The message that she's wanting to put out there is something that, you know, everybody should hear. Well, I was um, inspired originally to work with Michelle just because of Michelle. She came into a group that I was part of, of writers, a group of writers, and she told everybody what she wanted to do. Now, most people, they have scripts and they're working on a, on a script, but what um, Michelle had back then was an idea and a need to create this work. She finally decided that it, was, it needed to be a solo show, so she came to a group that I was running called Solo Lab. And uh, that was the origins of, uh, for me, with the play. And from the beginning, I was in. I was in because uh, she's such a compelling artist and she has so much drive and determination and the story was irresistible. She brought a lot of passion to it. Um, I think there were times where she felt that, you know, is this ever going to quite come to fruition, right? Until it, till you actually, you know, get to the finish line, it, it's a bit of a daunting task. I hired a life coach, David Frank Gomes, because I did not see how I was going to be able to write this play. It was too much. Five years of, of trial and error, like I, I'd start to write it, I'd put it away. I'd start to write it, I'd put it away. So I, I hired him and we worked together. He used to be a filmmaker and we worked together on the creative process. He, he would just talk to me about, well, what are the small, tiny steps you could take today? What's something you could do today? And he was so encouraging and he would, he would make me understand one of the ways that I could get out of my own way, which was to understand that it's not really about me. It's, it's an, what this play is an offering. It's an offering to the divine. Everybody's perception is different. So she was, I thought, very thorough because she wanted different perceptions and she did talk to various people, right? Her relatives, friends, just a, a wide variety to, to get a, a clear picture of her. Oh, I think she did a great job. You know, it, it was a very tragic event in our lives. Um, you know, our lives are basically before and after. You know, before our mom had passed away and after, it just changed everything. Monica and I said we were movie yes. stars and then they, they, we said, just kidding, we lived in that house when we were little girls and the park is named after our mother. She was Cecile Martin, so then they wanted signatures from us as though we were famous. <laughs> So, so we obliged. Yeah. yeah. It's it's been such a great journey watching her learn and so much about herself and and grow. She she said it herself to me just earlier today that she feels like a completely different person than than she was back last year in May. It's, it's been such a great journey to watch her find herself through this play and really just spend a little bit more time with her mom. You really see how how much it impacted her and how much uh, how much her mom and the way that she was and the, the bright light that she was made Michelle the person that she is today. I'm three years old. She's lovely and perfect and all I can see is her. I watch her do her makeup, her nails, get dressed to go out, bake cookies, laugh with my dad. She's sparky and sparkly. Their eyes twinkle when they look at each other. It was a very, very vibrant community, and I just fell in love with the whole vibe of being a part of something 
that was so fun and exciting to me. And I, and I fell in love with the theater and wanted to be an actor just like my mom because she was actually, I mean, I'm biased, but she was the, like a star. She was the star of the Barhead Community Theater. Don't sit in front of the poster. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, <clears throat> Cecile was, uh, I think, one of the, the, our best actors in the, uh, in the shows. She was a, an inspiration for anybody who, you know, was, was in a play or on stage that, uh, you know, to, to, do, to do the best that you could and be there. And, and we appreciated her for that. I remember her being so much fun. She, she lived for life. And uh, I was 17 and I was very impressionable because she was happy all the time. She would make a joke and it took the lighter side of life, not always so serious. Behind the scenes where we got to hear and learn the songs and sing along with her, by the time you got to the theater, you thought you were looking at a famous person, even though she was our mom. I do remember seeing a real chemistry between them and um, a real mutual understanding and, and joy of sharing this passion that they had together. Y yes, you could see Cecile in her, and uh, especially when she uh, got talking about intimate moments, you know, of her working, or being, being the daughter of, 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 of uh, such a wonderful person. you know, as Michelle got older and was a teenager and was starting to talk about going into acting um, and acting in school and stuff, it, it definitely made sense. Um, it, seemed, it seemed like a perfect fit for her. Um, and yeah, you just, you weren't surprised that that was the career path for her because it, you know, she's a natural, there's no doubt. My mom had a, had a great voice and I think Michelle has a great voice. You can, you know, you can, there's that similarity. Um, just, yeah, just how um, passionate she is about her work. I wore my Lauren Jenkins High School jacket to show these losers where I'm from! <laughs> no, growing up with the family, living in Barhead here for so many years, knowing everybody, <clears throat> it was good relationship, especially with the Martins. The family you wanted to be a part of, which I was. I, don't, I slept there, I ate there, like, wasn't like, oh, another mouth to fade, no, never. To honor her isn't a surprise to anybody who lives here, because they, they knew her. My mother was obviously very, very special. This very park is named after her. It was so much smaller when we first came here. It was called Bar Manor Park, as you know. And then it, it expanded to about 10 times its size. Like now when I come back and look at that hill, it's not so big anymore, <laughs> yeah. but at the time we used to toboggan down it and it was huge. When I drove by it today, when we drove by it, I said to Dad, that hill's so small, it used to be huge. I think she would be overwhelmed to know that this beautiful park is named after her. And as far as the show, well, she would be very proud of her daughter. It was her dream to, to be an actor and um, she was very close to her mother, and uh, I wasn't surprised when uh, she wanted to follow in her mother's footsteps. A good part of Barhead might not even remember Cecile or, or did, that, did not ever know her, but those who did were impressed and uh, they will be very happy about this show. I'm glad she did it in Barhead, I saw it at the Fringe, and it was awesome at the Fringe, but it was, it was different here. And when I talked to Michelle, she said she was, she was nervous to do it in her home, old hometown, and I think she pulled it off. It was very good. 
if my mother were alive to see this or could could see this somehow spiritually, she would love love um, being portrayed in this way. And you know what it really comes down to, I think, is nobody wants to be forgotten. You know, you don't want to be forgotten forever after you're gone. What stuck out to me was the part where she was alone in her room, I think when she was sick as a young girl and she was calling out for her mom. Just imagining my mom as a, as a 12 year old girl calling out for her dying mother, um, that really stuck with me. And in that moment, I was like, wow, this is, this is really vulnerable. This is really deep. This is probably one of the darkest days of her life, probably one of her worst memories. And she's, she's sharing it with us. Cherish your loved ones, you know? They're not going to be here forever. Just make the most of it, make that time count. I mean, I hope that they, they take away the who Cecile was as a person. I think when you see the final, the final scene in the play, you can really understand the full message of what Michelle is trying to say, that it's not all about the sad. It's about who, who was she when she was alive, and it's about how can we be close to our loved ones that this evening is one of the most important moments in my life for my own healing. And I want to thank you for coming.